Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about the new features in Proxmox version 8.3. And for those of you that don't know, Proxmox is a virtual machine manager. And so, yeah, it is commercial, but you can use it for free. So the first thing is Ceph. Ceph is a part of the Proxmox uh, installation, and they support both Ceph Reef and uh, Ceph Squid. So you have uh, your choice between the older version and a newer version that has just been uh, that has just been incorporated into Proxmox. There's also uh, the second thing is there's a tighter integration between the SDN. Now SDN means or software defined network. So SDN stacks have been part of Proxmox for quite a while. This is not new, but they have have tighter integration now with S- the SDN stack and the Proxmox firewall. There is also a new webhook notification target. So if you're uh, automating your notifications that come out of Proxmox, uh, you can use this new webhook to be able to do that. There's also a new tag view. Now, tags have been part of Proxmox for quite some time, but you couldn't really do a lot with them other than show them on the list of virtual machines. So you kind of get an idea, oh, this is Debian. In my case, that's the way I use them. This is Debian. This is Fedora. Uh, There's also a new change detection mode that will speed up your container backups with Proxmox. Basically, what they're doing here is that if there have been no changes to the container, then the backup doesn't occur. So there was a a mechanism to import uh, virtual machines from other, uh, other, uh, I guess, uh, other virtual machine managers. And so because of the stuff that's going on right now with VMware and their owners, Broadcom, The way that you could you could do OVF and OVA imports before, but you had to kind of peel them apart and then uh, construct the skeleton VM uh, description first, and then translate your storage over to uh, the Proxmox storage mechanisms for KDM. Now you can import both the OVF or the OVA directly. So there's been a lot of bug fixes with this release. Too. So why don't we delve in a little bit and let's let's go take a look at how this all works. Okay, I'm into Proxmox. As you can see, I've done my update. If you haven't done yours, basically you can choose your... Uh, I use the data center mode or the server view. And so you can just come down and look for updates, which is right here. And if there are any, then you can you can just go ahead and do the upgrade. Now, I don't have any currently because it's all up to date. But I can go ahead and do a refresh and see. Uh, one thing I will tell you is you'll notice the documentation out on Proxmox talks about 831. 831 ran into some issues. So the documentation, they didn't roll back. Uh, yeah, let me just... Close that up. Yeah, there's nothing here. One of the views that you'll find up here now is tag view. And so you'll see like I have Debian and Fedora listed here. And so there's my my Debian VMs and there's my Fedora VMs. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Let's go back to the server view. You'll notice that I have some storage areas down here and... Um, one of them is NAS. So in order for in order for your import to work, you'll need to define this one as having as having an import. So you'll need to change your type and add uh, import onto that and then whatever directory that you're interested in and using from for that purpose. As you can see, I have an OVF here that I'm I'm, uh, uh, ready to test with. So we'll go ahead and do an import on that. It's asking me, okay, so what do you want to set this to? It's reading out of the 
uh, OVF description. So I'm just going to look through here. I'm not going to start it automatically because I'll probably need to look at some of the device types. They won't quite match up. And we'll go ahead and start the import. This should build it as 102, as you can see right here. It is doing that. And I'm just waiting for it to copy over. This is a fairly large um, virtual machine. Okay, so that's done. So I can close this. And I, my virtual machine now has been named so let's, let's look at the hardware and make sure that we don't have any weirdness here. Um, okay, SCSI controller. That all looks fine. So let's go ahead and start it up. Now, I don't think I remember the password for this, <laughs> this virtual machine. This is pretty old, and I don't use these anymore. Um, It's starting up though. There we go. Uh, yeah, the cloud init data source not found. Yeah, it's okay. So yeah, it's up. It's up and running. So that works. Uh, I I just don't <laughs> I just don't remember the password to get in there. Uh, I change mine pretty frequently, and this is pretty old, as you can see. This is uh, this OBF was one of the ones I transferred out of. XCPNG. Oh gosh, it's probably been six years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been a, yeah at least at least since 2018. Yeah, so it's pretty old. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. As you know, uh, Proxmox 8x is based on Debian 12 or Debian Bookworm. There are, it does not use the standard Debian kernel, however, they, their default kernel with 8.3 is uh, 6.8, and that is the long-term release kernel, and so they're using that, and then Proxmox has added on whatever additions they need in order to support that. If you want to, you can upgrade to 6.11, and you may need to do that if you're putting on mo you know, more modern hardware that needs an updated version of the kernel in order to support it. Like maybe you have uh, some of the modern uh, 9000 series AMD chips or, or maybe you're, you're using Lunar Lake or Arrow Lake chips. And so, yeah, you might need those newer kernels in order to be able to support that newer hardware. So they give you the option to install 6.11. The newer 6.11 is an opt-in. It doesn't do this automatically. Uh, KMU is version 9.0.2, I think, and uh, and Lexi is version 6. Uh, ZFS is 2.2.6, uh, and that has compatibility patches that were installed in it to support 6.11. So if you're looking at the release notes for 2.2.6, you'll see that, hey, they don't support the kernel yet. Well, in Proxmox, they do. So you're okay there. Uh, uh, Ceph Reef is 18.2.4. And Ceph Quincy is also supported as 17.2.7. And Squid is 19.2.0, I believe. On the OVA, I did did not show you that, but I did run into an issue. My OVAs were created by XCPNG, which uses uh, uh, UTF-16, I believe. At least it declares it as such, but internally it actually writes UTF-8. Well, that confuses Proxmox, and so it will fail. So you'll probably need to unroll those into the into the individual components so you get the OVF and then it should should work fine. There should be if you're on version seven 
uh, like version 7.4 or higher. Uh, it should be seamless to upgrade to 8.3. Um, yeah, so you shouldn't have any problems doing that. So I updated to uh, Proxmox yesterday. Even though it came out, I think, last Thursday, I didn't, I'm didn't. i never real quick to just jump in and grab something until I had a chance to look at what's actually changed and whether or not I want to take advantage of it or not. So I upgraded on Sunday uh, to it, actually. And it seems to be working so so far. I mean, the I don't have any complex uh, virtual machines up, but, uh, yeah, they all seem to be working just fine. Uh, other than that... Um, that's all I had. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And go check out uh, Proxmox 8.3 and let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, again, if you're in clustering environments, you might want to kind of drag your feet a little bit uh, before going to it. I uh, Go review some of the forum comments uh, before you decide to go. That's all I had. Bye for now.